Welcome to my video series of Biotechnics Explained in 5 Minutes or Less, where I explain biology concepts within 5 minutes or even less time. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, just quickly hit that subscribe button. In this installment, we would discuss immunohistochemistry. So as the name suggests, immuno, it has something to do with the antibodies. Histo means it has something to do with tissues and cells and chemistry. So antigen-antibody reaction is somehow important for this uh, technique. So immunohistochemistry technique is used for a variety of purposes that we would learn. Now you might be familiar with this kind of images of cells, tissues stained with antibodies and specific cellular markers, sometimes which highlight cellular architecture, sometimes uh, protein distribution, etc. Now immunohistochemistry can be widely used in different techniques, including to visualize protein localization, to visualize life processes like cell division, to visualize several cell signaling aspects, to trace cell signaling pathways and also to trace cell morphology and determining cellular architecture. So these are few of the ways by which immunohistochemistry could be used in biology. Now the heart of the immunohistochemistry process is detection of a protein more precisely an epitope which is a part of the protein by antibody so our antibody is generated against a specific epitope so it is destined to recognize a specific epitope and we call this primary antibody and against the primary antibodies FC region there is a secondary antibody which recognize the FC region of the primary antibody as an antigen and bind to it oftenly the secondary antibody is linked with a fluorophore. So that allows us to get a fluorescence based detection. Otherwise, secondary antibodies could be also enzyme linked and that could give us a colorimetric detection. Apart from these variants, there are other ways where there could be antibodies which are primary antibodies but they are conjugated with fluorophore or an enzyme. More or less, they are the same way but they are way 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 costlier so people people prefer to use a combination of primary antibody and secondary antibody so have you ever wondered where does this primary antibody is coming from so let's say you want to use an antibody against a protein a so you generate this epitope and inject that into a host in this case the mouse and the mouse uh, would produce itself antibody producing spleen cells inside its spleen so you extract some spleen cells from that mouse and fuse it with a cancer cell line known as myeloma cell line to produce something called hybridoma the hybridoma are antibody working like antibody producing factories and they would produce antibodies and these antibodies are then collected purified and used for immunohistochemistry now the secondary antibodies are generated in a similar manner. In case of generation of secondary antibodies, the antigen that is injected into the host is the FC region of the primary antibody. And here is the process of antibody staining or here is the process of immunohistochemistry where the first step involves permeabilization of the cell. So the cell membrane is there so antibody might have difficulty to getting inside. So in order to uh, get rid of that problem, we wash it with mild detergent like Triton X along with buffer like PBS to permeabilize the cell membrane a little bit such that antibody can get in and the mo most of the cases the antigen which is the epitope sitting in somewhere in the cytosol or in specific organelles or in nucleus they could be accessible to the antibodies. Now second step is blocking. Blocking is an important step because it it reduces the chance of non-specific binding. Then primary antibody is incubated with the epitope. If epitope is there, it is expected that the primary antibody would bind to that epitope. Now then the process comes of uh, adding the secondary antibodies. And this process has to be done in dark. So the secondary antibodies would recognize the ep epitope of primary antibodies tail, that means FC region. Now if primary antibody is there, that means the epitope is there and if the secondary antibody is there that means also the primary antibody is there. So this relay of detection can tell us about presence of an epitope in a sample. 
So this is how. And the last step is detection of uh, the signal using a fluorescence microscope that would tell us about a localization of a protein or let's say cellular architecture, distribution of a protein and many more. So this is how immunohistochemistry is a useful technique especially in cell biology, developmental biology and neurobiology and even all of the fields of biology. So if you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.